I have so many people asking me about the PlayStation 5 in real life, in regular life. Yeah. It, not just online, not just messages, things like this. In real, regular life, people are excited about the PlayStation 5. Mm -hmm. And I'm just one guy. I just... You are. By the way, we're back. We are. It's been a while. Holy moly. Uh, for good reason. I mean, we got stuff going on. Yeah. People been. have seen the, you know, pictures. We have stuff going on. So... We haven't uh, been in this studio as frequently. However, uh, we're not going to let this lapse. We got to come back. We, I mean, stuff is happening. Yeah. So anyways, people are reaching out to me, not just on social media, but like I said, real, uh, real life stuff, friends, family, and so on. They say, where can I get this PS5? They don't say, should I get the PS5 over the mm. Xbox? They say, where can I get this PS5? Yeah. Which sort of, sort of shows you where the general public is at. Yeah on these next gen consoles. And of course, I have to go ahead and tell them that they probably shouldn't even bother looking right now. Uh -huh. Sony came out and said, look, it's gonna be just online replenishment. Good luck to yeah. everybody. We have no uh, quantity guarantees. You had the initial round of pre-orders, but then people immediately that missed out on that started to think, mm -hmm. oh my God, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. Now in the past, you would have an in-store chance. There'd be a certain number of units that have been set aside for the purpose of in-store purchases. It's like a lineup thing, right? Yeah, there would be for a certain amount. Search. And then so for those that missed out on the initial, they had a backup plan at least. Mm. Well, uh, this time around, there's no backup plan. Uh -uh. And so what we're left with here is people creating entire websites and web pages in order to track the online stock updates of PlayStation 5s. Now, I, for me, it's like, I can't imagine spending my time doing this, but then again, it's a, a lot of people still in some form of lockdown or some form of modified work life. And so you could just pop into the page here and just, yeah. uh, it's going to be like gambling. Keep checking up on the PlayStation yep. stock. Mm -hmm. So the headline here on Tech Radar: where to buy PS5, which stores have it in stock, and which are sold out. That's 36 minutes ago at the time of filming this. Now, of course, you scroll down, Will, you go far enough, you'll see the entire list of where to buy. And I got bad news for you. The entire purpose huh? of this site is to try to point you towards some stock. And it ain't no stock. Right. Amazon, awaiting stock. Check for updates. Best Buy, awaiting stock. Check for updates. Walmart, awaiting stocks. Walmart, Walmart had some for a minute. Uh -huh. Those went. Costco, they had bundles just for members. Guess what? Those are gone too because I clicked on a link. <laughs> Target, it was previously in stock. They tell you to keep refreshing. GameStop, keep refreshing. B&H Photo, awaiting stock. Newegg, awaiting stock. Adorama, temporarily not available. Sam's Club, Sony, Blah, blah, blah. And it's the same list for the digital edition as well. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. There's no discrimination on that front. Mm -hmm. You are being equally rejected at the moment, mm -hmm. regardless of which unit you're looking for. This tells us something, man. I mean, we knew it was going to be hot. Or, Turns out. Or they only made one. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think they made one. Or very low quantities. No, because we had those reports from the inside saying that they're boosting up the churn rate and they got this, they're going to try to meet the extra demand. And we had those stories along the way on this show right here talking about uh, them changing their projections for numbers of units. You know they're trying to play catch up here. You know the average citizen is trying to make up for the fact that they're spending more time at home. Yep. You know gaming in general has been doing well. You saw people lining up for the graphics cards. Uh huh. You know parents can't be taking the kids to the special activities, extracurricular, mm -hmm. right? All those, a lot of those things got canceled depending on the municipality you're in, the place you're in in the world. Mm -hmm. They're saying, I got to do something for this little guy right here. Yeah. Gotta get one of these PlayStation. Uh -huh. PlayStation 5, hold them over. It's been a rough year. And it seems everyone has put their focus over here. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna just throw something else out there at the moment. I don't know how easy it is to find the Xbox Series X, but I'm gonna say that's your sleeper pick. Because I don't, I mean, outside the exclusives, outside of the nice fancy design, outside of some of those uh, extra touches on a controller, for the most part, 
really what we're talking about here is higher frame rates and uh, higher res for more people. Yep. And I, I've been goofing on both. I've been goofing, Will. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, I boot up I, I boot up something on the Xbox. I say, damn, that looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. So that's my sleeper pick. Keep that in mind. But I have a little bit more to say on the Xbox Series X after a quick word from our sponsor today, which once again, one of my favorites. We're talking about DoorDash. You know this is my food delivery of choice, Willie Do I think I told really? you before. I feel like I got to remind you because we've been out of the studio a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you might have forgot that when I boot up the app, when I'm hungry, I reach for the DoorDash. That ain't no lie. And it's a variety of things that I may gravitate to depending on the situation. You see, there could be a family meal in a pinch. Mm -hmm. You could outfit everybody right from the, you know, the slightly higher end restaurant. You can do that. I can. Yeah, you can do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But then on the other end of the spectrum... You might be playing that new Miles Morales game over there on that PlayStation 5, in which case you got to just hit up the chicken sandwich. A little snacker. You just need a little chicken sandwich. Yeah. And it goes very well because you got the bun and the hands don't get too messy. Mm -hmm. So you keep it all together. Now, there's a couple of favorites. I mean, you can either get, and we've had this chicken sandwich discussion many times. You got the local place, Chuck's versus, uh, of course, the, the new Popeye's one. Yep. And they're very. it's a very tight race. The KFC as well. You got KFC in the mix. Yeah, Wendy's. I mean, and guess what? Guess where you can find all that? Right here. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be on DoorDash. So much to choose from. It is my delivery app of choice. It's all very clean and easy to navigate. You can see what's available, when, how fast you're going to get it. Uh, you get to save time. It's also nice at work. Every so often you're working a bit late. Maybe you, you call a meal in. You can keep working. You can stay efficient, Will. You don't even have to think about it. You don't even have to get up. Best part of all this you guys, you listeners and viewers, you guys get a special deal right now. You get $5 off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. All you got to do is download the DoorDash app and enter code Lou later. It's $5 off and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the app in the app store. You can get it on iOS or Android. It doesn't matter. Just make sure to put the code in Lou later. That makes sure that you get the deal. And it makes it makes sure that DoorDash knows we sent you, and then they keep sponsoring the show, and we keep eating the nice meals. Mm -hmm. You see how it goes as a full circle oh, like yeah. that, and we keep the chicken sandwiches flowing. All right, back to the uh, Microsoft topic here. I don't know if you saw this, Will. I saw this stuff floating around social media. I mean, I know I've been off the grid a little bit working on some other things, but I every so often I popped into the grid. Uh -huh. I just scrolled the grid every every so often, and then of course this one was in my social media. It was right there on the feed. And I saw some clips of smoking Xbox Series X. I said, here we go again. Mm. I thought to myself, isn't this just perfect? This is exactly what Xbox needs right now. Just a couple of them to explode and create some viral mm -hmm. clips. I mean, I did the same thing everybody else did when they saw the clip. Because mm -hmm. you didn't imagine there could be more to it. Maybe on second glance, you did. Mm -hmm. And on second glance, it turns out the whole thing might have been uh, for the memes, as they say. Yes. And it's a... It's a it's no telling what they'll be doing for those memes. Yeah. It's no telling. Especially uh, in 2020 when people, like I said, man, they're, they're chilling. And it's all, and it's a little bit of uh, entertainment. Yeah. You see your clip going viral? My goodness. Uh -huh. Well, speaking of going viral, we have, a, we have a meme debunker that came center stage post-exploding smoking Xbox clips. And he said, oh, no, whole thing's a scam. People are blowing vape smoke into their Xboxes to make it look like it's smoking. And it's a very, I mean, there's a whole move to it. You got to you kind of blow, you exhale the smoke into the bottom side there, and it ends up coming up mm. through that singular fan unit. I mean, it looks fantastic. Well, I mean, not if it was actually exploding, but it's, it's quite the look to it. Yeah, it looks convincing. It, it lets it's you actually see the amount of airflow that can be moved from the unit. Yeah. There's some practical application to this if it wasn't that uh, vape smoke, which you wouldn't want to be using for that kind of technical purpose. But you'll see here, he blows it down at the bottom portion, and look at that. Boom. Smoke in Xbox. Oh, my goodness. What a controversy. But anyway, so the clips got viral enough that Microsoft actually had to respond and mm -hmm. said, look, don't do this, please. 
That's your hot new console. Yeah, you just bought it. Well earned money. And they, they, I mean, they didn't say you're going to damage it for sure, but their statement is, we can't believe we have to say this. This was on on uh, the Xbox Twitter handle. We can't believe we have to say this, but please do not blow vape smoke into your Xbox Series X. Hmm. Please don't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we going to do? Get a warranty return here uh, because uh, everything got smoked out? I don't know. Yeah. But it's obviously not designed for those particles. Probably a couple times won't damage it. I am not recommending you do so. Mm -hmm. uh, the meme is well established now. I don't. You don't need an extra. We don't need any uh, pile, more piling on. Or maybe yeah. we do. I don't know. People are going to do what people are going to do. Is that right? Uh, now, if you go back to the original article there on The Verge, you'll see people have... Uh, there have been other fakes, including the fan levitating uh, ping pong ball. That's for the memes as well. Oh. And I scroll down to the next image. There you go. Look at that. It wasn't actually uh -huh. floating. So... This is the internet. This is 2020. Believe nothing ever. Mm -hmm. Just believe nothing. Nothing is real. But but think about this, Will. Uh. When nothing is real, if nothing is real. Okay. Are you the are you just making this up? I'm making this go, up right or? now. If nothing is real, we're in trouble. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. <laughs> if nothing is real, I mean... Eh, Let that settle. There in. is a residual to everything being a joke or a meme. There's a residual. There's a consequence. Like that little feeling of, ah, uh, because no one wants to get got, as they would say. Yeah. Like we have such an aversion to being the fool yeah. that we trend so far on the side of skept, uh, skepticism, it can there could be a, a negativity residual, mm -hmm. even though it's just a little laugh at a moment. But if everything's fake all the time, I mean, we talk about this with the, you know, the fake uh, video clips, uh, re, uh, not deep fakes, the, deep fakes, things like this. Mm. Once our default status is everything is fake, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. It'll be impossible to get new. It'll be possible to get information to anyone. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, there's a skeptical. massive communication breakdown uh -huh. as a consequence of that lack of trust in everything that you see and hear. Everybody trapped at home and they're paranoid anyway. Mm -hmm. And then you just add to it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's where I was. I, I wanted a better uh, sentence. You to, wanted to sum it up? Yeah, I wanted a better sentence to do it. But it's actually probably better that I explain the whole yeah. thing anyway. I mean, because people would have been like, I don't know, what did he mean? What I know, they're probably skeptical. What, it, what, yeah, exactly! Yeah. We got this, uh, sticking with these new consoles, since they're all the rage at the moment, we got this number four on trending right now. Travis Scott plus Cactus Jack Experience PS5 Unboxing Reimagined. So I see the title, and I know the collab is going on mm. because Travis Scott, uh, his agent, ha has gotten him all the collabs. Yes. He called him up one day. He said, how many collabs do you want? And then, He's like, and yes. then Travis Scott said yes. Yes. Which is another meme. See, now I can't trust him. Yeah, I mean McDonald's. He got the Cybertruck. He got he, Fortnite. He, Fortnite. Um, obviously he's had the thing going on with Nike for a while. Yeah. Uh, you add Sony to the roster. It's it's high profile brands. Mm. He's doing okay. He's the guy. He's making a few dollars. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway, he's, so he's like cemented as the guy, the sponsor guy, the spokesman. Yeah. The spokesperson. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so. This, I, I saw the title and I thought to myself, by the way, look at that rating pending <laughs> to mature. It could be anything in here. Uh, I saw the title and I thought, oh, he's going to do a cool, like maybe minimalist or uh, kind of avant-garde avant type of unboxing video. Uh -huh. But then it was, maybe it was even beyond what I expected here. The video opens and he's in a desert. Uh, what does he do? He throw throw a rock at something, and anyway, there's a giant screen emerges, and and he's playing PlayStation Five with giant speakers. They they have this aesthetic going on, which by the way, is very reminiscent of the old that old commercial for was it Trinitron or THX? No, uh, it might have been RCA. I can't remember. It's the guy getting blown away on the chair from the oh. Hi-Fi system. Oh, I yeah. don't know if it was Sony or Panasonic, but of course. 
I used to read the, uh, I used to be, be a fanatic for the old National Geographic magazine. Mm. I'm 87 years old. I'm talking about a, I'm talking about a physical magazine. Yes. With the yellow cover or Ages. the yellow, the yellow border. You physically. Yes, man. And over. I used to be a fanatic for that as a, as a child because uh, the nature stuff and all the rest of it. Mm. And, uh, and the photography was some of the best you could see oh, yeah. at the time was inside of a National Geographic. And the brand National Geographic changed quite a bit, but that's what it was. The best photographers in the world went to, went to work with National Geographic at a moment. And I would be just as interested in the ads at the time huh. because there was some serious creativity to go with that as well on a single page. And, and I remember that iconic ad. It's the guy in the chair. I don't know if he's in a suit or what, but it's like wind is blowing out. Yep, he's being yep. blown out the chair. And it's a big screen in front of them. I think they, they're going for a similar aesthetic here. And that, that thing is old enough now that you can kind of redo it at this point. Now, you'll notice in his case, it's all very deconstructed. The chair that he's sitting on is held together by bungee cords and a piece of foam without the cover on it. He just found it in a desert. And it's an enormous screen. So anyway, he plays for a little while, as you might expect. So there's no real unboxing there. He's just sort of playing these various games. And then as you scan forward a little bit, there are you're, you're uh, greeted by two civilians, two citizens, who it looks like were filmed fairly recently, and they are asked to approach a van in which Travis Scott is housed. And they tell he's they, housed in there. He's housed in there. Okay. And they tell these two kids, "Hey, approach that van over there." And the kids start walking up to it, and they notice uh, it has PS5 logos. They say, "Oh, this is about to be a day." And they knock on the van, and, and it's Travis Scott, and he just gives each of them a PlayStation 5. And they game together for, I don't know how long, but I mean, in the clip, it's just a few seconds. And they're like, whoa! Yo! You know, the usual <laughs> YouTube clip, when somebody's surprised. Yeah. And, and then after that, we have a musical performance on a piano. I should know who this is. Maybe you can help me out, Will. This is who? Uh... Will cannot help me out. No. Will cannot help me out. Anyway, so we have a little uh, breakout in song, and then we have a tribute after that, a kind of mashup edit uh, featuring Pop Smoke, a uh, tribute to Pop Smoke in the in the uh, PlayStation font there. So obviously very sort of artistic thing, uh, part of the collaboration, presumably there's some creative control that goes to Travis Scott and how this stuff is mm -hmm. is done. And I don't I, I don't mind that. You know, I work with brands in the past, Will, and this to me doesn't look like corporate content. It does look like he had some level of control over how it was edited and what it was, mm -hmm. because it's 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 a little bit abstract. Yeah. And uh, and so. I can appreciate that. I think it, that's how you do a decent partnership if you're a brand working with an artist. Uh, so we'll see where this partnership goes, but it doesn't end here, though. This no. this uh, um, collaboration is ongoing, and it's going to reach further. And the next story showcases mm -hmm. that. Check out these sneakers. We're looking at the PlayStation X Nike Dunk. Lowe's, Travis Scott. Wow. He's just nonstop. It's nonstop. Guy. He just keeps going. It's nonstop. And I always wonder with the bandwidth, does he, how much input does he have on his sneakers? I like the sneakers. Yeah. The the nice uh, blue. And, but, but also, I like the canvas. Because mm. typically you would have a leather over there. Yeah. So I like the canvas and I like the blue. And of course, the PlayStation logo is iconic. And they went with that kind of like, uh, what would you call the color of the sole there? I mean, it's not white. Uh, it, it's like a cream. Yeah. It's like a cream color in the midsole. Yeah. And anyway, the backwards uh, Nike logo. And I like the rear of the shoe. If you, if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see the Sony mm. on the heel, upper part of the heel section. So anyway, he's got these sneakers, but, but you can't, these are hard to get, man. Like it was a whole raffle situation. And uh, it, it's part of the collab, obviously, to 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 create some hype. But it was there was a raffle going on on his website, which was 
which is shop.travisscott.com. Following the premiere of the unboxing reimagined short film that we just showcased, we just talked about, uh, he put this raffle up for only five winners. Wow. And one day entry window. Five winners. Jeez. What are those sneakers That's gonna be worth? Very limited. Damn. Now I don't know if they'll go on to release any more than that if it's five winners for now. And then eventually there's more availability. But anyway, for the time being, that's an exclusive sneaker. And it just it just continues this really epic collaboration. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I mean, people appreciate that when you just do something cool and yeah. you 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 use the uh the attributes of each of the two parties in such a way that creates something new and unique, but building on the fan base of each of those things. It's hard to do. Yeah. It almost seems like even like this car that we're looking at here, this van, there's some DNA of Travis Scott's like vision. Absolutely. It's no. actually kind of cyber trucky what they did to that sprinter van or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, it kind of looks old. And yeah, yeah. Mad Max style. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Well, it goes with the Cactus Jack Dean. Yeah. That's not the only thing that happened in sneakers recently. Actually, we have our first pair of automatically lacing Jordan 11s. Mm. Uh, of course, this was a thing being covered, I've covered on a channel. I mean, I've unboxed the very first version. Well, not the mags, but I did the uh, first Adapt basketball shoe. Yeah, Adapt BBs? Uh, yeah, and the next one too. I think I did two. the two yeah. versions. Anyway, this to me looks like a modified, uh, obviously pulling uh, from the Adapt setup well are what are they calling are they calling it the jordan adapt i think they might be yeah the air jordan 11 adapt so they're just going to admit like look we're it's similar tech so the lacing is i mean this is something that people had dreamed about for a really long time obviously since the back to the future days this idea of a self-lacing sneaker or sneaker without laces necessary mm -hmm. uh, no one wants to bend down no one wants to do up a lace we're well aware and I don't know what the adoption has been on this stuff. I don't see it in the streets, but then no one's in the streets anyway. Yeah. Like they normally would be. And for the people who are, they're not flexing the sneakers as they would be. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to know who's picking these up, but there's an app that goes with it. You can control the fit and you can have it, uh, you can also unlace from there, but it does have dedicated buttons on the sole as well that you can use to achieve the same thing. It's the first time it's happened in a Jordan sneaker. Not the first time it's happened in a Nike sneaker. First time it's happened in a Jordan sneaker. So Jordan coming into the into the future as well. Yeah. I'm guessing you can charge it on like a platform too, right? Yeah. Like the previous version. Like the Adapt. That's yeah. right. Now, I don't... These are, these are uh, set to be released next month. And apparently, it's going to have a pretty hefty price tag, Will, around 500 bucks. Mm. So keep that in mind as well. I will say the Adapt, when I goofed with it, I was a bit worried that it was going to be a lot heavier in exchange for that technology being in there. But it felt just like a sturdy basketball shoe to me Oh, at the time. So that's just a little feedback on the Adapt stuff in general. I don't know. Which one do you think looks better, the Jordan Adapt or the Nike Adapt? The Nike Dat BB. Uh, Which one do you think I looks? I feel like these ones look better. You like they that just one? Look, yeah. look cleaner. Yeah, a little bit, little mo little bit more futuristic, more futuristic too. Futuristic but you, it's hard more. with the Jordan brand. You gotta yeah, pay homage gotta at, uh, every time. So, but anyway, coming to the Jordan brand as well. We have some iPhone 12 news. iPhone 12 developments. We got the score in from DXO Mark. Mm. Hotly uh, debated benchmark sort almost benchmark but of course photography is somewhat uh, slippery yeah somewhat personal what you think is better or worse but for 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 better or worse these are the guys in the mm. game and people do pay attention to what they say well they took that 12 pro and they gave it 128 score in their camera test that puts it in fourth place overall of all smartphones currently available now some people might be upset at that However, it's important to note that DxO Mark gives points for a variety of camera characteristics. You know, things like autofocus and things like low light performance. Mm -hmm. But one of the characteristics is zoom. 
and maximum zoom. Right. And these are not crazy zoom performers compared to some of the others on the list that are ahead of it, including the Mate 40 Pro and the P40 Pro. Huawei has been at that top of that DxO for a minute or two, mm -hmm. as the youngsters would say. Yes. They don't even say that. <laughs> anyway. I say that. Anyway, the I, I think people had high expectations for the iPhone 12 Pro. Did you just call yourself a youngster? How oh, dare yeah. You? And I don't think this is necessarily a letdown to be in fourth place over there. By the way, the other phone that beats the iPhone in DxO, the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra. Now, DxO did go on to say that they were really impressed by the autofocus on the iPhone 12 Pro. I can agree with that. Yeah. Uh, well, though, you're using the iPhone 12, 12 Pro, Pro, the exact yeah. device we're talking about. It's one of the areas where Apple has really uh, excelled for a while. And yeah. trust me, I've done bizarre things with smartphones and autofocus. Bizarre, eh? I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. And the iPhone is top-notch. So in certain categories, it's, in my opinion, the best out there. Uh, video mode, fantastic on the iPhone as well. Other categories, like maybe uh, the computational stuff. The, yeah, the AI. The AI, the post-processing stuff that goes on sometimes is a little bit not to my taste comparative to some of the Pixel stuff. But again, it's very personal. There's a very personal thing which makes the entire concept of smartphone, camera, benchmarks tough. Mm -hmm. Makes them real tough. But it's something to take a look at. It's uh, uh, something to, to read about if you're interested. But take it for what it is. It's still trying to put a score on something that to some degree is personal. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also important to note, though, by the way, that... The, that Samsung doesn't have a device super high up that list. They have only one device in the top 10, and it's coming in at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's coming in at number eight, and that is the Galaxy S20 Ultra, and that's uh, with a score of 126. Now, all of these are very close. From first place to 10th place, you have a gap of 136 to 124. Hmm. So, I mean, these are all great cameras, obviously, we're well aware, but some, it might surprise people how many brands that are less popular in North America are on this list as well. I mean, there's an Honor device there. There's oh, a yeah. Vivo device there. There's a, a, an Oppo device, two Xiaomi's, and two Huawei's. It's nice how it's even, well, not evenly, but distributed to different manufacturers. It's not just like one manufacturer that has the best cameras. Yeah, but then again, it shouldn't matter, right? Like... In other words, you're saying that that makes you feel like it's more authentic. Yeah, it's like diversified. There's, they're not, they're not but playing, they're not I playing mean, favorites. They are, they are but close. they could also engineer it that way so that people keep reading the site because yes. some everybody's a fan of one of the brands. Yeah, that's true. So, but I'm not suggesting that either. I'm just saying. Well, you, you did. Well, I mean, again, it comes back to the everything being conspiratorial. 2020. Uh -huh. You got you, Everyone is asking. Read the article. It's all skeptical. It's like, well, I DxO, I don't know. And that's how it is, man. Yeah. It's not such a bad thing. People ask questions, be inquisitive. It's not such mm -hmm. a bad thing. And next up, smaller iPhone batteries next year. We just, it's just the iPhone 12. We're just digesting iPhone 12 stuff. And then you got Quo going on about the iPhone 13. He can't shut up. He loves the iPhone 13. Uh -huh. And people are already feeling like, oh, geez, this stuff is moving fast. I just spent a grand. I know. Spend a grand. What are you telling me here? Well, battery has been, well, it's been a subject with the iPhone 12 series because, to be fair, the iPhone 11, particularly the larger models, had a tremendous battery. Mm -hmm. And Apple, you know, a few generations prior to that, hadn't really been uh, the battery champ. And so people were, were super happy when it looked like battery became major focus with the 11 series. Well, then the battery shrunk a little bit to accommodate this new design on the iPhone 12 and uh, whatever other components had to be jammed in there. And it's pretty much the only area where you could even argue that you may have gotten a downgrade. Really nothing else. Not the chip, not the screen, not the... I mean, maybe some people prefer the curved form factor, but everything else, the camera, uh, the RAM is improved. Uh... Uh, yeah, every single department is improved except for potentially battery life. Yeah, spec wise. Right? Yeah, spec wise. Yeah, spec wise. Not not style. Not not the or optimization in software. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then this comes up. You got Quo talking about the iPhone 13. He says they're gonna sh- they can they're gonna put an even smaller battery, or they can put an even smaller battery in the iPhone 13, and people get nervous about that, thinking, who wants that? Who wants a smaller battery? But apparently, there's some new tech, emerging tech, that is going to allow these batteries to shrink due to new technology known as soft board batteries. And what they're able to do is get uh, better performance out of a smaller footprint. So they can cram more battery life into a smaller package. And the consequence of that may be that if they're able to, if they if they stick to the current design, but then they go in there with the new softboard tech and use even the same amount of space that's currently carved out for battery, you could see them get closer to that previous capacity inside of the new form factor mm. using this new tech in the 13. Because I don't think anybody really expects a complete overhaul in the 13. Mm-hmm. Right? They don't usually do that. Usually when they the make TikTok a method. Yeah, they make a big leap like this. And then they then the form factor at least hangs around for the most part going forward. So uh they can do thinner batteries, but it might not necessarily mean a smaller battery in your next generation iPhone. Now, this is the one, this is the event that I completely missed. I told you I was off the grid. My goodness, I was off the grid. I didn't even watch this. I did not watch this keynote on a new uh, Apple Silicon stuff, the new laptops. You did. I did, yeah. Yeah, it was all. it's all about yeah. this M1 chip. It's all about these benchmarks. Everybody's fired right up. Uh-huh. They're fired right up. And, uh, I mean, there's fighting words in the social media. People are saying uh, Apple's about to defeat everyone and all the rest of it. And, and others defending, I don't know, AMD, Intel, whoever else, mm-hmm. don't feel the same way. So it's become a hot topic. Well... Of course, we don't have all the numbers and we don't have the whole thing in front of us. We don't have the real world stuff in front of us yeah. because the systems aren't there yet. But we do have some benchmarks, of course, coming from your classic geek bench. And it looks pretty promising. Well, I got to say, it's it, kind of like a big deal. Oh, yeah? And it might be. Uh, so they got the Mac right. Mini coming in single core, 1682. The Air, 1687, and the MacBook Pro, 1714. Now, first thing to notice is how close those all are from the Air to the Pro. I mean, you kind of wonder if you, why you even need the Pro at that moment mm-hmm. when you have the single core so tight amongst that group. And then you look at the current overall single core benchmarks, and guess what, Will? Those numbers, particularly the 1714, well, all of them, they beat the top performance over there. They're beating... A Ryzen 9 5950X, 16 core. I mean, it's, well, I guess the cores don't matter when a single core test that we're talking about, but still, we got some heavy hitters in there and Apple's putting up numbers and they're putting up numbers, like I said, not just on the Pro and the larger form factor model, but on the Air? Mm. Jeez Louise, are they are they making moves or what? And so one of the, some of the sentiment that I saw on social media was around people on the previous generation who had just spent a bunch of money on like a MacBook Pro spec it out i9 yeah. type deal. And then all of a sudden this stuff is obsolete. Like for example, 2019 16 inch i9 MacBook Pro scores 1118. Right. 1118 on a single core. The new Pro 1714. Now, again, this is single core performance. It's all going to, we're going to have to figure out real world where that makes things snappier compared to the multi core, which those turn out to be a little bit closer performance wise Mm -hmm. from the old stuff to the new stuff. But either way, in we were talking in the past to get anywhere close to these single core, multi core about Pro models exclusively. You would take a major dip in performance to go to the thinner models. Mm -hmm. So the real story is what they were able to do in the air, in my opinion. And giving you something super close to what the Pro was, has been capable of in a much smaller form factor because you control other elements, the hardware, the design. Now you're on the chip. You do the whole thing from the ground up. But it is important to note this is just a benchmark. Yes. This is just Geekbench. And we got to see what this means in the real world. Mm. And that brings us actually to my next article here, which is why the new Apple M1 MacBook Pro isn't a smart choice for pros yet. So this is the other side of the coin. 
And it has nothing to do with performance and benchmarks. And it has everything to do with compatibility. Right. This is going to be a major transition. Mm -hmm. We've already got new software. Now we got this new hardware. And sure, Apple's going to figure it out. And if you primarily operate within Apple's professional applications, maybe yeah. it's okay. It's going to catch up quicker. But if you're into those third party, if you're into those other, I mean, how long is it going to take for them to make those optimizations? Mm -hmm. I get it. The Apple footprint is big. If you were a software developer, you'd want to go focus on it. But sometimes you can't move quick enough. Yeah. You just can't do it. And so we, I guess we work in a sort of a pro environment, sort of, a sort of pro environment. I mean, we have PCs sort and Macs of. and everybody's uh, on different platforms. Yeah. Recently, a lot of the editing moved off of Final Cut and into DaVinci, yeah. around here at least. And there's all kinds of plugins and color correction tools and even in final cut maybe certain things you have connected to it that aren't operating as expected yeah so anyway the the argument that's laid out here does have some merit but it's also not uh it applies to anything that's brand new mm -hmm. it's not specific to the m1 chip it's just hey if you're a pro using a macbook pro here's something else to consider before you rush out and hop onto the M1 train. Mm -hmm. You may want to keep your old unit around for a bit longer and let some of the stuff get ironed out. This is how you treat a, a V1 anything. Yes. And when it's your phone, it's one thing because well, your phone, you mostly it's mostly a consumption device mm -hmm. and less so a production device. But if it's your pro system, it's something worth thinking yes. about. But I'm not trying to rain on any parade, Will, because no. the M1 stuff is, it is impressive. The numbers speak for itself. Uh, it is impressive, and I'm excited to try it out. I'm curious. All right, last one is kind of a interesting twist. We have a uh, Elon Musk update. Mm. He apparently has tested positive for COVID-19, but also tested negative for COVID-19. Oh, you you're nodding your head like, yeah, Lou, I got this story. I saw it in my feed, which is happens. I'm often. agreeing to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I happens. read. You know? I mean, it happens, man. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, the reason this is an interesting story is obviously because he has been fairly vocal about the pandemic in general on Twitter. He's there's been I mean, he's expressed himself in a variety of ways around this thing, talking about inflated death numbers and all kinds of other stuff. And and people have disputed some of the stuff he said, and and others agree with him. Mm -hmm. But either way, he's been vocal, and now he finds himself right in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. And people are curious, okay, how are you going to talk about it now? And yeah. obviously he's not in a like super high risk group. What is he, 49 years old? Uh, 50? Elon? Something like that. He's not in an extremely high risk group. So chances are things are going to be okay. But at this point, the confusing part, he is 49. At this point, the, co the confusing part about it is the testing. Uh, the, the, the tests that he's done, I believe it's four tests, yeah. two positive, two negative. And now he says... Hey, something bogus is going on. The quote here, something extremely bogus is going on. Two tests came back negative. Two came back positive. Now, these tests that he took were, were rapid antigen tests that re produce results within 15 minutes. However, they are less accurate than the tests that take longer. I mean, this is always the case, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And they can be useful because... Some people just, sometimes that option doesn't exist. And when you're trying to control the spread, you got to go with something as quick. Now, I think the false negative, if you get a false negative, or, so, or maybe the other way around, a false positive yeah. is less dangerous than a false negative. Mm -hmm. Obviously, because if, the, if you, as far as spreading, it's concerned. Yes. Although in the case of him, it might be the other way around because it would take him off the grid and he's got a, obviously got a lot of work to do. Yes. But either way, it, it goes to show you that uh, there is no standard here. Or if there is a standard, it's the long form standard, which is not really convenient when you're trying to fight this type of situation, mm -hmm. a global scenario like this. How do you instruct a person on what to do if they got to wait for their results? What do they do for the next 24 hours? Because right. that's what he's waiting for now the results from the more extensive 24-hour test. And we're going to obviously get an update tomorrow, and that one's going to be more definitive. But what about in the next 24 hours? Is it just, I guess yeah. it's a voluntary type of quarantine. In the meantime, uh, was tested for COVID four times today. 
rapid antigen test from BD, BD, a company that provides these types of tests. Uh, anyway, he's uh, he's Elon Musk. I'm sure he'll be okay. Even if he has COVID, he's going to get hit with that high-level treatment. He's going to get mm -hmm. the SpaceX treatment. And he's probably going to invent like a COVID test of his own. <laughs> you know? Maybe. Yeah, maybe he's going to deconstruct the current test or uh, enhance it in some way. He's, he's obviously going to be intimately interested now. As far as symptoms are concerned, he says he's got nothing more than the feeling of a regular cold. So it seems like he got the mild version. The whole thing seems to be getting more mild for whatever reason. Yeah. There's lots of people getting it, but fewer people dying. I mean, that could be demographic based. There's mm -hmm. so many factors going on here, but it appears he's a, well, his interest in the matter is now more intimate than it was previously. Uh -huh. And we'll follow up when there's more news on that.